I would like to say for uh, somebody who can do makeup and like make purple eyeshadow look good, good for you. It's really hard because it's a cross between like an elegant purple eyeshadow look and a glittery black eye. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of the Let's Get Kraken podcast. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back. Sorry I took so long. If you are a new viewer, hi, I'm Eden. I'm the owner of Kraken Made, where I sell handmade progress keepers, hand dyed yarn, um, my own pattern designs, and other handmade treasures. You can find me on Instagram as crafting crack and made you can also find me my patterns on love crafts and ravelry and i think that's all things all the links to um my internet whereabouts and uh all that i talk about will be down in the description box below so yeah welcome back we are in my new little office area it's a little bit of a mess but I have been cleaning up. There is so much stuff in the uh, cove right now that I usually film and it is a smoky day out there pretty bad. So we are staying indoors and we're here. This is the space I have. I kind of have all my, my books here and uh, this is like a little peek into um, a shopping street that my husband got me for my birthday that you could like build it yourself. It was really fun. And yeah, so sorry it's been so long. I have been um, super busy with getting ready for the Great Northwest Fiber Fest, and also I got pretty sick um, for a little bit there and just was in bed, just sleeping, and I am way better now um, yeah I'm on the mend and I feel so much better so I was finally able to get on here and talk about what I'm working on there is so much stuff I have two finished objects I have some works in progress and I have some acquisitions which has been quite a while since that has happened and a new project that I'm hoping to be a finished object today Okay, shall we just hop right in? Probably. Let's start with the biggest and the most amazing finished object. I finished my neat ripple blanket. Aww. Let's see if I can just get this to be nicely folded. I'll put in a video of it um, all undone here. Well, not undone, like... <laughs> Um, laid out so you can see all the colors So for the last time this is my neat ripple blanket. It is a pattern by attic 24 I made this out of holding fingering weight scraps double and just letting them marl. I did a little bit of control to make sure that you didn't have like a weird mix and that there wasn't like a huge section of red or something. I mainly aimed to have very different colors in the blanket. If you, they were either polar opposites or they were kind of in the same, like I had a light red and a dark red. I wanted to make sure that it continually marled throughout the whole thing and I made this with a size four millimeter crochet hook I don't know what that is in US um, yeah and the total weight of this I just weighed it this morning so that I could tell you the exact weight is 1924.8 grams of yarn make this blanket 
It is so cozy. It is pretty heavy, not crazy heavy, but it's so, I don't know, like when you have it on you, it's warm and it's comforting and it's exactly what I wanted, which is amazing. And it gave me the most amazing time to make it. Like I never got bored of it. I got worn out in the wrist sometimes because it's so much crocheting. But other than that, enjoyable all the way through. I highly recommend this pattern. Um, and especially with scraps, it keeps it interesting the whole time. And a huge shout out to Brittany of Crooks Fibers who gave me so much fingering weight yarn to put into this. I am for superwash scraps, so she had a bunch that she didn't want to use. She is um, amazing and uses like, not strictly, but loves to use like the 100% wool. So she gave me her superwash scraps and I would never be able to finish this blanket so quickly. With the amount of scraps that I had, I ran out. I had to like dig really deep to find just this little bit more so thank you so much Brittany I would not be able to accomplish this blanket without you so I haven't blocked it I don't think I will I will probably block it once it needs to be washed but I have um, a pretty clean edge I decided not to put an edge on it but as you can see hopefully super clean edge. I'm actually very proud of that. And the top little ruffle is very cute. So that is my neat ripple blanket. It's done. I'll just give you like a walk through. Oh, that's the wrong. So I started. Come on. So I started down there. There's just so much to look at and enjoy like it's I kind of I love the end section more than how I started I think I think I pref I just love all those pops of colors and I love the end that color is amazing so yay I did it did it that took me about a year. I have to check. I'm pretty sure I have a photo of the day I started this blanket. I know I have an Instagram post the day I started this blanket. When I started it, I had accidentally made it humongous. It was probably going to fit like a king size bed and still touch the floor. Like it was a huge chain. And so I had to um, hire the help of my aunt and my husband to help me unravel the marling and then try again. <laughs> I'm very happy with the size. It fits um, very comfortably over the top of our uh, double or it's a perfect couch wrap up blanket. Um, I don't think you'll be able to hear it, but if you can, I'm sorry. Our neighbors are getting their trees cleaned up in the front yard, so there's a chainsaw going on. If there's a weird sound, that's what that is. Yeah. Okay. Finished object number two. Oh, I don't have sock blockers with me. That's okay. Um, I don't think our sock blockers can fit men's socks at the moment anyways, but I finished my husband's socks so fun so I knit these out of my own hand dyed yarn the uh, orange creamsicle sock set so the main is orange creamsicle and then the blue is blue raz and I put it in the heel flap I just used a vanilla sock pattern I think I'll write up if anybody wants a little Ravelry blurb of how I did the striping so for me 
and knitting socks for my husband in vanilla socks. I did a 72 stitch sock. I do 18 rows of uh, knit two purl two. I did, let me see here, five rows before I started the blue. Then I did eight rows of blue, just in there. Four rows of orange, and then eight more rows of the next stripe, and then however long you want your leg to be. I believe I did like 25 rows afterwards before I started the heel flap and gusset because my husband isn't really a fan of tall, tall socks. He likes them to fit nicely right there. <laughs> Sounds like they're mulching the stuff. And then lastly, I just did an umbrella toe. Oops. Umbrella toe or balloon toe? I think it's either one. I use the toe from Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. Her crunkle socks have this toe in it, so I just took that toe and put it in here, and I'm hoping he'll like it. I really enjoy wearing my socks with the um, umbrella toe. It seems to fit very nicely, so I thought I'd give that a try. I knit these using 2.25 millimeter needles, US ones, and I did the magic loop. Love these. I had so much fun doing them. And I've cast on a new socks, new vanilla socks. I feel like I need vanilla socks usually to have for mindless knitting. So I started a new one. They still need to be blocked. Um, I'd have to hunt down our men's size sock blockers. Yeah. Fun, fun. But yes, I have two of these sock sets left if you want to make a pair of these. It was so much fun. I love the colors. They complement each other really well and they're just really, I don't know. It's, it's a weird color combination to have a like bright royal blue with a bright, uh, like that classic orange color, orange creamsicle color, but they work really well and I'm really happy to, have worked with it. I think the orange when we dyed this was actually my husband's creation. So yeah. Glad to have that in there. And those are my finished objects. So let us scoot over to works in progress. So my first work in progress is one that I thought would be a finished object this episode, but it got thrown to the wayside for other projects, unfortunately, but I've got a whole sleeve just about ready to cast off. This is my zipper sweater by Petite Knit. It is so cozy. Yeah, just gonna cast that off and then I need to do the other sleeve and then it'll be blocked and I can put the zipper in and we'll be done. I have a ton of progress keepers <laughs> um, on this. This one's mine. That is Are We There Yet? It's a hand-painted progress keeper. I believe most of these are uh, close. I've got a sea glass progress keeper. I've got my a uh, little book. What's this one? This is Moby Dick. The novel. Got a little uh, Nintendo Switch progress keeper that my brother made. I believe that one is from Amy Kate of The Graceful Tangle. Made me that one. Same with this one. And this one, actually. So, yeah. Lots of progress keepers to keep track of my decreases. So, when I do the other sleeve, well, actually, this one isn't a decrease. This is just a progress to know how far I've gotten on the cuff because it was a lot of ribbing. But yeah, one more sleeve to go. I am knitting this out of two yarns, the mohair. Oops. 
I'm on my last ball. This is Nature's Camouflage from Tofino Nitco on her mermaid, mermaid hair base. And this one is Wandering Woods from Dragon Horde Yarn on her fairy tale DK base. So, so pretty. And I'm knitting these with the needles called for in the pattern. Yeah, almost there. I will probably pick it back up after I do the um, Great Northwest Fiberfest when I get back from that. This will probably be the project. I will sit down and I will finish it up. So it'll possibly be done the next episode. Okay, next work in progress is a new one. I've actually got two new ones now that I think about it. Nope, three new ones. <laughs> one of them is kind of same yarn you've seen before, but in a different project. So I decided I really wanted to cast on a sock blank sock just to show people at, uh, while well, I sell sock blanks, and I wanted to show what it looks like knit up because I think that makes people nervous when you're just knitting a knitted fabric into a different knitted fabric. It could become wonky, which is true, but you just have to have a slightly con like tighter gauge. I'm not saying a tight gauge, but anyway. Here they are. I've just got the cuff done. And I would say with sock blank socks, it's not that hard to get like a nice clean fabric. There is mine. And it looks exactly the same as how I knitted out of just a regular hank of yarn. So you just have a little bit of control. Gauge really is the best thing to say because I give it a little pull and it's good. Not even, you don't have to pull it like this, just a little boop. Anyway, I have a new Painted Progress Keeper on here. I don't know if I'll be able to show it. Ooh, you can. That is a new Northern Lights Progress Keeper that will, I'll put that in the shop next week when I get back from the yarn event. That's a lot of things I'm gonna be doing after the yarn event, but I just, dyed this up randomly to knit with. This is a sock blank that Kim of Ginger Snap gave me and I was, it was plain so I dyed it up. I tied the blank in a knot and so those patches of color are where it was exposed and then the plain is its original color and that was where it was kind of tied. So I just wanted to randomly diet. It's going to be interesting to see how it knits up. It gives me a little bit of a striping, but not really. More like a like a swirl of raspberry in vanilla ice cream is the best way I can explain it. So yeah, I'm doing these magic loop on size 2.25 millimeter needles, US ones. These are my Chia Goos. It's a little big because um, I used to knit my socks two at a time and then I f later found that it was really monotonous to knit it like that. So I switched one sock and I really, really love it. I love how it feels and it's not hard to get a clean sock out of a sock blank. If you don't want to knit right from the blank, you can just wind the whole blank up onto into a cake is what I recommend. And I've just got it in my um, Hocus Pocus bag from Tofino Knit Co. For, that was her Halloween advent last year. Okay, this one is a quick one. This is kind of a project that um, won't be done anytime soon, but I wanted to do anyways. So this is the yarn from my very first 
Advent Swap with Amy Kate of the Graceful Tangle. Um, I started knitting a garter blanket from like corner to corner style. And it was fun for like the first, sorry, I had to sneeze. <laughs> Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I almost made it to 10 days and then I realized that this just wasn't what I wanted to do with this. It's beautiful and the fabric is amazing, but I just wasn't into it. The rows were getting long and I was only on day nine. So I knew that I probably wasn't gonna make it to the full 24 days. I was going to do 24 days all the way for the first half and then maybe like a plain fingering weight yarn for the second half. It's like I just, I don't think it's going to work. So I finally decided that I wanted to start a new crochet blanket with the yarn minis. And I am doing the, what's it called? The Fireside Blanket by Attic24, the same lady who did the Neat Ripple Blanket. I had seen little bobbins uh, make a couple of these blankets and I thought it was beautiful. And my idea was to f take the little squares and just hold the mini double. And I'm again crocheting this with a size four millimeter hook. So I'm taking the mini, I kind of just, I had them in magic cakes and I just like pulled the layers off as cleanly as I could. Um, it looks a little messy, but it's okay. So I hold a double, I do up to four rounds of just a regular granny square and then cut it loose. And they're just so cute. And I love how squishy they are holding fingering double. Yeah, so I've got a, a bunch of them in there. Woo. And for the blanket, I'm definitely going to need more um, little minis. But my thought was for this Christmas, if I, I finish up these little squares, I can take the leftovers of these, these little squares and make the bigger squares probably either marl them or just do them in sections easily enough. And then with this year's swap, because we are doing it again this year, I will finish off the rest of the squares I need to finish the blanket so I can have two different years in the same blanket. I still have to like undo this, put it into little cakes so I can crochet them. So it's very simple and then throw the little minis into this other bag for the bigger squares. I'll pro I can put a picture in of how it looks. It is a free pattern, so I've just got a bunch of little, little minis in there of the leftovers. So that's my, my slow project. Okay, so last work in progress to talk about I have that I've been working so hard on so I am knitting I wonder if I have I'm pretty sure I have a picture here maybe I don't oh there we go I am knitting the Colstity by Crea Bea I am knitting the fingering weight version in my own hand dyed yarn and this is just oh, amazing i wanted to knit a sample out of the whirlpool fingering because it's a very interesting yarn that a lot of people don't really know what to do with oh my goodness so i am knitting this out of mermaid's kiss in my Whirlpool Fingering Base, which is one ply superwash merino, two ply non superwash merino. And it is so light and airy. It's not scratchy at all. Oh, and look at that. Look, I haven't alternated skeins, and that's what it did. It's 
pretty much perfect. <laughs> I've finished the sleeves. It is a short sleeve tee, so that is awesome. I went down a needle size for the main body needle. So I am knitting the body with 3.25 millimeter needles. Oh, I can't read it. It's on the cord. Of course it is. Hold on a moment. I think I have. I do. Uh, 3.25 US 3s. I, I just got a new set for sock knitting from my local yarn shop. I guess that's an acquisition. <laughs> I forgot about that. I have just like another inch to go on the body and then I will be able to do the ribbing, get it blocked, and I will be able to wear it for the weekend. I just, I love it. I love it how it feels. I love how it looks. I love the pattern. It's very easy to follow. Great instructions, very straightforward, and it's a raglan, so you have your increases and a very neat raglan line on there. I just love it. And I'm able to knit this with two skeins of yarn. This is how much I have left of my second one. And it'll definitely be enough to finish this off, so I'm very happy with that. And I'm keeping it in my brand new bag by the one and only Logstead, my mom. How pretty is that? It's my Christmas bag. So I will leave her Instagram linked below. That's where she's selling her bags right now is on Instagram. Don't know if there's any left from her last shop update, but this was in her first shop update. She's currently working on some pretty cool new ones. I get a back backstage access to seeing all of the new bag creations and she's got a pretty little tag and inside is some wonderful canvas and it is very spacious it's great what you do is you just fold it over put the little loop over the button and your project is safe and sound i'm sorry i'm there is felt on the back but there is also dog hair all over the back, unfortunately. <laughs> That's my fault. <laughs> yeah, beautiful quilted project bag. Okay, so that is all that I've been working on. I do have a little bit of acquisition, so let's just hop right into that. So, for acquisitions, la this last week, was the seventh anniversary of our local yarn shop, The Impossible Knot, in 100 Mile House. And we went and had a wonderful time, and I won some yarn there. So I got, I bought these uh, Chia Goo Lace in 3.25 because I love having these for my DK Weight socks and other DK Weight projects. I find that that's the ideal size for a superwash DK because it, when it like relaxes, that kind of fabric is perfect. And I won this yarn. So the lady who owns the shop also has her own yarn dyeing company, All Points North Yarn Co. She will also be at the Great Northwest Fiber Fest with me. And this is Firefly on her Divine DK 100% Superwash Merino, dyed here in Canada, and possibly swear words. <laughs> so it's a really cool black with this like pop of, I'll just undo it so you can see. I'll do it back up nicely, I promise. This pop of pink and yellow, so I thought that would be so cool. To knit up into a hat. Hang on. Okay, there we go. And then 
yarn and then I also want a matching pom-pom for it. And this is just in black. So I thought that would make a super cute hat. And then I also bought some yarn that I actually have had and used before. This is Briggs & Little Regal two ply. It's their worsted weight in the color Fundy Fog, color 60. And I got four of these. I love how um, reasonable Briggs & Little is. So these were like $8 each. I got four. And I have two left in my stash from a past project that I actually don't have anymore. I crocheted a sweater out of it and I found that it wasn't overly comfortable because it was really thick and the lace sleeves weren't actually keeping me warm. So I gave it away, but I had two skeins in my stash and I didn't know what to do with them because it was too much for a hat but too little for anything else. So I decided just to get more and I'm going to knit another spring autumn jacket out of this. And I think it's gonna be really pretty, really comfortable. If you're somebody who's not a fan of scratchy wool, Birds and Little is kind of a hard, it's a hearty yarn. And if you don't like the scratchiness, it's not really for you. But if you can get over that, it should be okay. Since I'm knitting it in a cardigan, um, I think it'll be okay. I, I actually don't mind the scratchiness all that much. But yeah, so that is my stuff from the Impossible Knot Yarn Shop. And then this amazing gift from Serena of uh, Wild in the Woods Yarn Shop. I'm just gonna take the top off, but look at that. How pretty is that? This is her Practical Magic themed yarn box, which me and my mom love that movie. We turned it on as we opened up this box. It was so sweet. So I'll, I'll just hold up all the stuff because it's actually not as nicely packed as it was. Whoop, I don't want to show you my address. <laughs> um, it's not as nicely packed as it was before. So there's this beautiful kitchen witchery printed on canvas with all the different spices. It's so cute. There's these, oh, actually I have it around my neck. Got a tiger's eye crystal. From the movie it's wrapped around in some pretty silver i love tiger's eye it's so pretty i love how it catches the light a gorgeous homemade candle with lavender and rose petals it smells so good oh yeah and there's a little quartz crystal in there too and some chamomile tea and the most beautiful little teaspoon my goodness I love this spoon I have a insanely large collection of pretty little teaspoons so I was so happy to see this I'm gonna put it in my collection some amazing little pins and a little pretty little bag so we have a little witch's hat that matches her logo. How shiny that is. And then a cute little lavender sprig. Also shiny. And some lavender from her garden, all wrapped up in a little smudge stick. It smells so good. Oh, I love it. I love just leaving these just to release their scent into the room, so nice. And then we've got some Practical Magic themed cards. And I think this is a coaster. I might be wrong. I don't know much about 
actual witchy theme stuff. Um, yeah, so I assume this is a coaster that helps you make decisions, but <laughs> I don't know. It's not really my thing, but it's still beautiful. And to top it all off, she actually threw in some stickers too, and I dropped them. Of course I did, because I'm crazy. I threw one on my water bottle, because me and my husband have the matching water bottles, and I don't know, we don't mind sharing, like we're not cootie sensitive. <laughs> I like to make sure my water bottle is mine. Some beautiful stickers. in there. There was one that I really love. Oh, it's still in there. This one's my favorite. She matches my eyeshadow. That's what I was going for. <laughs> That's my favorite sticker for sure. And then last but certainly not least, this. <gasps> oh my goodness. Serena is so good at dyeing yarn. She dyes um, natural wool. This is her folklore. Rustic Canadian wool hand dyed in small batches on Vancouver Island. 100% wool, one ply, 400 yards, fingering weight. So this one is fall in love whenever you can. To quote from the movie. Look at that little pop. So pretty. I got the fingering weight one and my mom got the worst weight one. And this is Death Watch Beetle. Oh, I feel like it's, it seems silly to say, oh my goodness, I need to make socks out of this. But out of 100% wool like this, how amazing would some woolly socks be just in your boots during the winter time? You have such nice, cozy, breathable socks. And I could do like alternate them. So I could technically get two sets of socks out of them. I think that's what I want to do. I don't know how it'll hold up being a single ply, but at 100% wool, I know it's gonna at least um, hold up to some wear and tear. And if not, I can patch it. It's very easy. 100% wool socks are very easy to match. So thank you, Serena. Love it so much. I'm so happy to. I really want to work with that. I'm going to light the candle and I probably will just cast on socks because why not? That's, I, I feel like lately I just need to cast on why not projects. So that's what I'm going to do. I think that is all I have to talk about. Um, <laughs> so move on to probably some life stuff. Grab my bag. If you don't want to hang out for life stuff, that is totally okay. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed all my yarny content. If you did enjoy the podcast and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And comment down below. What are you doing? What, what are you working on? Where are you from? Introduce yourself. I love to chat with you. And yeah. Also, if that's not your thing, just pop a like on there. That means a lot. Oops. I should stop, stop moving. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Okay. Life stuff. Like I said before, I've been busy doing stuff for the Great Northwest Fiber Fest happening in Prince George this weekend, August 27th. Um, if you're in the Caribou area or somewhere around like Prince George, I would love to see you there. That would be amazing. If not, that is okay. I will um, be putting all the leftover stuff back to the shop online for you to order and I still am very grateful that you can come over to the podcast to hang out with me for a little bit. And I did get sick. I had to get some like proper medication for it. 
Um, nothing crazy serious. I just needed to get a checkup and I got the medication I needed and I am feeling so much better. I am back to normal. So that was nice. It sucked to be off my feet for so long, but at least I'm okay now. That is what I am grateful for. So yeah, what else is going on? Not really much. We've been hanging out at home. It's been smoky from all the fires around us. We are not in danger here. Just, it's just smoky and that's just how it is. I hope that everybody who's watching this podcast is safe right now from the forest fires. It is doing some damage. That is really hard. It sucks. So I'm very excited for summer to be over and for fall to come and for forest fire season to be done. I would like it to rain all over to just end it. (laughs) So hopefully that'll happen. I have been doing a ton of work Um, just reorganizing my own living area. I've been de-junking and donating a lot of things and just trying to get a better handle on the amount of stuff me and my husband have. You know, after a while, you just, you've accumulated a lot of stuff and there's more stuff than actual space to put it. So I've been working on fitting into our space better. I have been reading a book. I have it actually right here. Uh, My Hookah Home. My mom had got me this for Christmas last year. I feel like I talked about this book the last podcast. Maybe? No, it was probably Instagram. That's what I'm thinking of. But it's an amazing book. And it has been super helpful to kind of wrap my brain around how I want to set up this room. I have turned my desk around so that the wall is behind me and I can have all my books here. I'm in a little like office cove, little C-shaped area. And I find it actually very comfortable. Um, It's a little weird to walk around, but I... I really enjoy having my own little space to just have all my work stuff. It gets out of hand, that's for sure, but I'm working on that. Um, We switched out some closets for a dresser. That was fun. Yeah, I think that's, that's really it going on. Can't think of anything else that Life is just life, and I am so excited for just summer to be done, and for the fall time to come, and just new season would be amazing. Yeah. That, that's really life stuff for me. Anyways, I hope you are all doing well, and that you're safe, and you're working on amazing projects that make you happy. I guess this is just really where I say goodbye. Very short and sweet life stuff. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Please give it a like and comment down below. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. It means a lot to me. And yeah, I think that's it. Thanks again. Bye.